detecção de domínios maliciosos. Olá, eu sou Marcos Rogério. Eu vou falar sobre a detecção de DNS maliciosos por DNS. Eu vou falar devagarinho para ser amigável com os interpretes. Eu gostaria de agradecer os interpretes pelo seu trabalho. I have a master's degree from the University of Sao Paulo, State University of Sao Paulo. I work at Acme Cyber Security Research Lab, and I'm part of the, the um, different projects. Today, I am going to speak about the classification system of the system, the results, and the conclusion. At present, there are more than 480 million registered domains. One, over 1,500 TLDs, one out of 10 URLs are malicious, and these attackers use the DNS structure for malicious purposes, such as malware, botnets, fast flux domains, and DGAs. One of the ways of reducing this is using block lists, where the user reports this malicious site. And through human participation, you go and check whether this is a malicious site, then enter this into the block list. However, the block list takes some time when you update them. Sometimes it takes up to a year. So what we propose is to use the passive DNS traffic information and machine learning in order to make this detection automated without human participation. And thus, you don't need to wait until that domain is included into the blacklist. There are 12 features in this passive DNS traffic, I will be speaking about that. And also for the use of this data, we use block list plus allow list in order to determine whether these domains were already there so that the machine learning classifier can learn from this. The data set that we use was finally provided to us. We use part of this data set. And after doing the naming, we realized that we had 46% of the subset that was legitimate and 52% was unknown. In other words, it's not related to the block list or the allow list. So this was not conclusive. We therefore tried to use that unknown base to work on a labeled and client subset with 97.8% of legitimate domains and only 2% of malicious domains. Now, using this data set, we took this gross data and had it classified according to features. We extracted the features and these then were included into the machine learning model. After selecting the features, we took this, this data to use in our model. We then have the known block list and the allow list. And so prepared the algorithms, which is one of the ways of learning. After training and learning the algorithms, we then will have them ready to produce the detection report. We use unlabeled data and then sent these to the classifier. And based, this was based on the data obtained through the algorithms, which then lead to obtaining this detection report. The results we obtained were the following. The idea this gives us an idea of the average of the efficiency of this classifier. This bar here will let us know what is the likelihood of the prediction uh, being correct. So we use different types of algorithms. All the algorithms are based on decision trees. So first, we tried 
um, we've tried different types of algorithms. And finally, the best results was the one we mentioned last, the XG post. So this was quite uh, good results. The more than 90% uh, were the correct results. But nevertheless, we had to use a special technique which consisted in leveling these issues. We took all the malicious records and the same amount of legitimate records. In this way, we produced a balanced data set. So this technique, you might lose a significant loss of data because a subset was a bit imbalanced. So this might affect the validity of the model. We then took 10 additional subsets at random. We diversified these as well, and then added legitimate domains. Here, the global average is the average of all the other 10 subsets, and we have a very low confidence interval. As a result, the model learned through these data. And this would allows us to make uh, forecasts with the same results or predictions. So using metrics obtained from the passive DNS, uh, from, from the DNS passive traffic, we then managed to determine which were the malicious ones. In order to have better results, we used a Bayesian optimization. And this led to obtaining a better performance. The AUC mean was 0 0.9763. Therefore, this shows that our model has more than 90% uh, positive results. I would like to thank Mnemonic for having uh, provided the data set for this study and Nick VR who assists us with the research. These are some of the references I used to set up this paper. Thank you very much. That was what I wanted to share with you. And I'm happy to take any questions. Gracias, Marcos, por tu presentación. Um, Thank you, Marcos, for your presentations. Hugo, are you there um, to uh, see if there are any questions? Well, we don't have any questions so far. Let me check. Hola. Macarena, acá tengo Hola, Macarena, there is a question here. Could you tell us, could you tell us which are the 12 features that you use for the purpose of classification? Do you analyze the answers to the queries or on the traffic? Well, yes, we use 12 features through the passive DNS traffic and use minimum and maximum values of the domain. We added all the queries. And one of the important things that I would like to highlight is that we didn't use domain names or any feature related to the domain name or the IP or the IP that answered. We just used the DNS features, maximum TTL, and so on. Thank you. We have another question from Carlos Gannon. What block lists were used for this? We use 
proposed a compilation of block lists for this. And we mounted on different types of malicious domains. For example, those related to malwares or phishing. So we used about 12 different block lists. We did the compilation and then produced one single block list. The same we did with the allow lists. And these were also compiled. And as a result, we produced just one in order to then process the data. Thank you. We have a question in English. How do you evaluate the influence of unbalanced data on your accuracy? As we opted for using certain types of areas in order to obtain an ideal result, it is better to use balanced data. That is why the best metric or, or to assess a binary classifier with a balanced data set was the area we opted for. So we used balanced data for this purpose. Can we have access to that list of uh, blocked uh, data? Well, yes, of course. These are all publicly available. You can Send me your, leave me your email address. This is my email address. So I will tell you one by one which were the block lists that were used for the compilation. 